Good evening. Shere Pisrav Ros. Hail to the cross. It's the second day of the Feast of the Cross. And we're going to talk a little bit about the life of the cross. Living a life, the life of the cross. Yesterday's psalm was actually very beautiful. Last night's Ashaya. It said, Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So let's focus on this psalm. What is countenance? A face, a face right? But well, there's two definitions of countenance. Someone's countenance is defined, yes, as their facial expression, but also as their support, according to the New Oxford Dictionary. I don't know anything. But we're going to focus for a little bit on this second definition, support. The psalm is telling us that when God supports us, that we dwell safely and have joy. When his countenance is with us, when his support is with us, we have safety and we have joy. Because it says, Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart for you alone, O Lord. Make me dwell in safety. With this support, we have this. This is because on the cross he showed us that he loves us with all his heart with an eternal love. He showed us that his support is infinite. He will always support us in the life of righteousness. But he's not going to support us in the life of wickedness and sin and darkness. Then yesterday's gospel as well, <laughs> it was very beautiful. It was actually John chapter 8, and I love the gospel of St. John. But particularly in the verses 34 and 36, it says, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whoever so cometh sin, committeth sin, is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. What is this? If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free. We come to understand in this that the cross is like a key. You know a key that opens doors? I'm sure you know what a key is, but I have to make sure. I'm not going to assume anything. <laughs> the cross is like the key in our lives that sets us free. When we choose to live the life of the cross, we taste the sweetness of freedom in and with him. In him and with him and through him and for him. We take up our cross when we deny ourselves. But how do we deny, how do we deny ourselves? When we think of our Lord first in everything that we do. When we ask ourselves how we can best honor him. We think of others before ourselves and do our best to show everyone Jesus Christ. This is how we deny ourselves. This is the key to living the life of the cross. The life of the cross is not easy and never was promised to be easy. Actually, our Lord made it very clear. It's going to be trials. You're going to have hard times. It's a promise. But he also promised that he's never going to leave you. And he never left us on a tangent, you know, not on my notes, but he was crucified in the air between heaven and earth. He's always with you. He's in the heaven, he's on earth, he's in your heart. He's always with you. He's never going to leave you. Times are hard, and they're going to be hard. But Christ is always with you. Just make the sign of the cross if you need to remember this. The life of the cross isn't easy. But know that with the cross you have freedom. You may feel as if you are free now, you may feel that because you have freedom to do as you choose, that you're free. But you're not. <laughs> you're not free, actually. When you do bad things, that is. When you do bad things and sin against God, the Lord tells us in St. John's Gospel that you're actually a slave to sin when you're doing bad things and you're sinning. You become a slave to sin. Do you know what a slave is? What, what is a slave? can't coexist with freedom, that's very true. A slave doesn't have control over their life. A slave is someone who doesn't have freedom. But with God, if we choose to follow God, the key word is choose, if you choose to follow God, you will have freedom. You will have liberty. 
But what does this look like? I wrote this for little kids, so. What does this look like? It looks like clean music. Yeah, I mean, we're all little kids. We're all little kids. But it looks like clean music, clean words coming out of your mouth, clean thoughts. It looks like the sacraments, abiding in the sacraments, regularly partaking and practicing the sacraments, and not just something you do when the guilt gets heavy. No. If you only go to the doctor when you're sick, you might go when it's too late. So I suggest you continually see the doctor at a regular checkup called confession. When you take your regular medicine that's prescribed to you, it's the holy body and the precious blood of our Savior. It also looks like, when we deny ourselves to follow him, helping mom and dad, but also helping each other, helping your brothers and your sisters, coming on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. and doing the food bank. At 7.30, if you want to get bonus points. <laughs> this is what it looks like to deny yourself and to choose to follow Christ. When you're not thinking of yourself first, and you're thinking about what I want to do. Because sometimes, maybe you don't want to listen to clean music. Maybe there's a song from your childhood that's nostalgic to you, and you just want to listen to it. But when you give the evil one an inch, he's going to take a mile. So it looks like clean music, sacraments, helping mom and dad, and being honest in your schoolwork. But even so, being honest at work, being honest in your service, being honest with your spouse. This is what denying yourself looks like. Little things that sometimes we can take for granted. All of these are ways we deny ourselves and take up our cross, and in time we'll enjoy the freedom and eternal joy that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But looking at this gospel even tonight, it's very beautiful. In the doxology, we say, held to you, O cross, the sword of the spirit. Held to you, O cross, the sword of the spirit. And then we read in John again, the Lord is telling St. Fotini, the Samaritan woman, that a time is coming where the followers ought to worship in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. What does it mean to worship in spirit and truth? and not just at a, a place. She said, our forefathers say this place, but you're saying this place. They worship on this mountain, but you're saying we need to go to Jerusalem. And God is telling her, no, we, the time is coming when we worship in spirit and truth. The cross is the sword of the spirit, so when we pray, we ought to use the sword. You don't go into the battle without your weapons. You don't go unequipped to anything. You don't drive a car without your keys. So how are you going to pray and worship your Lord without the cross, without making the sign of the cross, without remembering what the cross means in our lives. We always hear that there's no resurrection without the crucifixion and no crucifixion without the resurrection. These are very key moments in our Lord's ministry to us that matter deeply. The cross, we can't speak enough of the cross. There's a Theotokia that says, what bodily tongue can speak of the honor of this virgin? talking of St. Mary, but what bodily tongue can speak of the cross and the salvific work that was accomplished upon the cross, upon this sword of the Spirit? Use this sword when you pray and throughout your daily life because it says, I believe in James, I'm not a Bible scholar, man ought to pray without losing heart. So if you're constantly praying, you're constantly keeping the cross at the forefront of your mind. They said that St. Pashoy Camel actually made it a point every day to ask the Lord, what is his cross today? What is going to be today's cross? Not that he can run from it, but so he can embrace it. Because the cross, as we said before, is a key. It's a key to your freedom, but it's also a key to the storehouse of graces upon graces. We say in the Gregorian, who crowns us with mercies and compassions. This is the key to that. When you take up the cross, but you can't just simply as we said before, just take it up randomly as you're going about your day. There's a key step that comes first. The Lord Christ said you have to deny yourself. We have to remember this. The cross is the denial of the self. Our Lord Christ emptied himself and ascended the cross, ascended this wood. He denied himself first. We always say, we read in the Bible, why do we love him? Because he loved me first. He denied himself, so I'm going to deny myself. We follow him every single way. He emptied himself, so we have to empty ourselves. 
if we wish to understand the power of the cross in our life. We even see many times the healing of people at the sign of the cross. You make the sign of the cross, you hear all these saints' stories, and they're healed by the power of the cross, by the power of him who was nailed onto the cross. Let's remember on this second day of the Feast of the Cross that in order to truly love God with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul, that we have to deny ourselves and take up the cross. It's tied together. You can't separate the two. There's no way you can love yourself more than you love God. And if we're having a problem with this, we have to sit down and reflect and ask ourselves, why is it that I keep choosing myself over my Lord? Why do I keep choosing this sin or that sin over my Lord? Did I forget what he accomplished on the cross when he denied himself, when I spat in his face, when I smote him on his cheek, when I whipped him, when I nailed his hands into the cross, when I mocked him and put on him a robe of scarlet and a crown of thorns, I must have forgotten this every time we fall into sin. So let us remember to deny ourselves and to be honest in our schoolwork. And glory be to God forever. Amen. For greatly.